Okay. There is one type of program I have not mentioned because it's an oddball one that not everyone uses and it uses the same types of programs that we've already been using. This type of program is called background logic. Now background logic is a parallel program that is controlled by the system. It has a lot of restrictions to it. You can't have any motion in here. You can't have any logic in here. It does some very simple stuff. What I've used this for in the past is to save an exposition value to a register and then transfer that register to a group output so that I can tell the PLC what our exposition is. It was constantly running as fast as it could so as to update the PLC as much as possible. This can be slightly faster than a parallel program because it's not restrained as much. The way uh, parallel programs work in FANUC is it'll actually run um, a section of code in one of the programs, then switch over and run a section of code in the other program, switch back over, run a section of code in the first program, then switch to the second one, run a section of code as well. As for how much of a section of code, it depends on how it compiled. A complicated process that I'll admit I don't fully understand but the way background logic works is it'll run the program every ITP cycle which is a way that FANUC actually calculates um, the section of code it runs. An ITP cycle is usually about 8 milliseconds and that it's usually like a uh, small line or group of code um, that the robot compiles. You'll have to look up ITP in the manual or talk to FANUC to get more details on that. But overall, I have found background logic to be a lot faster and more reliable method than parallel programs. I've had parallel programs abort on me for no reason at all so I've switched over to background logic when I can and when I can't I'll usually have some sort of monitoring method with uh, parallel programs where the parallel program will pulse a digital output every loop if it's going to be constantly running and the PLC will monitor that digital output to see if it ever turns off and if it does it'll uh, vault out the robot until that has started back up again. So background logic programs are overall faster and more reliable but due to their restrictions you may not be able to use them uh, for what you need to do. I'm going to quickly make a, an example program and go over a new system variable that you're not too familiar with as of yet. So I've made a simple background program right here called Z Position Monitoring BG. Now this abides by the restrictions for background programs. You can see all the background program restrictions. If you go to the uh, Handling Tool Setup and Operations Manual and go to the Background Logic section. There's just a ton of them. What this program is actually going to do is it's going to first enable the monitoring of the robot's distance. In other words, how far it moves from whenever you started this. And it's also going to enable the monitoring of the position of the robotic arm which is like the X, Y, Z values. And it's going to set the register 20 to the value of the Z position. So as the robot's moving, 
we're going to constantly grab the Z position and put it into register point. Now you don't need to actually set this uh, monitoring of the distance since we're not using distance here but uh, out of habit I usually set the monitoring of the distance and the monitoring of the position at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to menu setup background logic and we're going to say choice next page Z position monitoring we're going to keep the mode in auto you can modify this as you wish look up the different options in the manual and we're going to start the running so we now have the current Z position there now with this program here this data here does not update when you're just jogging the robot around it only updates when you're actually running a program so what we're going to do is we're going to run a program so we're going to do function board on shift let me actually pull up the robot so we can see that shift forward and you'll notice the Z position is moving constantly as we run this program here. We can pop down the speed and see it a little clearer as it's going. There we go. So you can use background logic programs for whatever you need. What I could have done is instead of setting this to a register, I could have set it to a group output so it is sent directly to the PLC. When you set it to a group output, keep in mind how many outputs are in that group output. Uh, for this one, I needed a word. Because I used an int to transfer this data, what I'd actually done was I used this value without the decimal places. Now keep in mind that the uh, robot will use two's complement when transferring data in group outputs so you'll be able to translate it easier on the PLC side.